Good morning, everybody. Man, you cannot trust the ads timer on freaking Twitch. It's awful. But hello, everybody. Welcome to Book Club. Let me actually sit down properly so I'm not flailing all over the place. First of all, congratulations, Syrinx and Jam Jam on first and second, respectfully. Hello, Syrinx. Hello, Jam Jam. Hello, Juju. How's everybody doing today? We're probably not going to have a super long stream today because The Hobbit is a very simple book. It's a fun little book, but it's not like, I would say, it's not some deep, incredible, how to say, I don't know. There's, I don't think there's a whole lot to break down there, but I did enjoy it and I'm doing all right. Juju, thank you for asking. I'm a little bit tired been trying to be a little bit social recently and that's apparently really exhausting so yay oh, I think I actually okay I did actually grab the, the book itself unfortunately I don't have any what do you call it um how to say I can't make bookmarks. Sorry, I'm also like brain dead to all heck today. So like I said, it's not gonna be a particularly long stream because my goodness is my brain not working very well right now. But let's talk about The Hobbit. And also check to see if my music is too loud. I don't think it's too loud, but it should be fine. But yeah, like, The Hobbit was a fun little book. I guess we'll go into the non-spoiler portion of it first. Like, you can feel that it's a very Tolkien-written book. It's very, um... I'm not sure spending socializing. I'm getting a semi-reasonable amount of sleep, Juju, but, like socializing for someone like myself eats a lot of batteries like i don't do a lot of hangout and talking with people it's not really a thing i do besides like you know like digitally typing when i'm like even if it's like online conversation from the perspective of like vocals it's very um it's it's very tiring Because when you type to somebody, it's very easy to, how to say it, to take as long as you need to get your thoughts across. But in social situations, you need to, like, actually sit down and, like, make sure that you're projecting yourself properly. That you're being enthusiastic about the things you need to be enthusiastic about. Make sure that you're masking properly because social situations... Is are also complicated. That's why you drink. I mean, done it. A little, little, a little sippy every now and then doesn't doesn't make it that difficult. All right, no Hobbit. It's book club. We're talking book club right now. So Tolkien is definitely. He really likes to talk about scenery. Like, he is a chew-the-scenery kind of writer. Which can sometimes really make the reading a little bit difficult for someone like myself. Where it's just like, uh-huh, yep. Yep, we're still talking about the forest. Nothing has happened this entire page because all you're doing is talking about this forest. I get it, you need to set this up, but like me with ADHD are kind of like mm-hmm yep okay yeah uh-huh yeah you're still talking about that huh nothing else is happening and then it's just like and then this happens it's like all right now I'm back on board again like something's happening characters are interacting and action action is happening uh, a situation is unfolding etc it's like great perfect we need that but then like once that um that scene is over 
it's like back to chewing the scenery again, and it's just like, uh-huh, yep, yeah, we're back, yep, yeah, the- I already knew that this forest was creepy. Like, you know, I'm using forest specifically because that's the particular area of the book where I had like a bit of like, man, this is such a, like the actual like intense parts are really intense, but like when there's no intense parts, it is. It is a bit of a slog to read through. Hold on, sorry, my music's a little bit louder than I thought it was going to be. There we go. But yeah, like, overall... Thank you, Mr. Motorcycle Man. Like, I think the book was relatively good. If I had to give it, like, an immediate, like, score, I'd probably give it, like, a 3.5 out of 5. Like, it was fine. I enjoyed it. it was But it was, like, above average. Just its low points, really. Hold it back. And that can be definitely difficult but again this is a very subjective take on the situation but you know that's just me that's me coming at it as somebody who is who suffers from ADHD and dyslexia there were occasionally sometimes where I would just be reading and he just use one of them as my family would say one of them five dollar words and I'm like uh-huh. Hope I'm gonna figure out what that means through context. Think you can give a quick summary? Sure. So, The Hobbit is a book about a hobbit named Bilbo who essentially... A oh, joke's on you, uh, Ignis. They're turned off. The... I hope. I'm pretty sure I turned them off. I hope I turned them off. Wait, what the fuck? I didn't turn them off? Why would I not turn them off? Well, joke's on you. Now they are. <laughs> Like I said, brain's been really dead today, so I'm pretty sure I somehow was just like, I got to them and was just like, do I turn those off? I don't think I need to turn those off. Oh, I should turn those off. And then immediately was like, oh, I should go and grab myself water and then walk away. But yeah, the summary for the book is there is a, a lad called Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit, who, like, I mean, th to summarize the book in like a few sentences is... Bilbo is kind of invited slash kind of forced into an adventure to help a bunch of dwarves regain their mountain home and treasure from a dragon. And the whole book is about the adventure of that. It is a fairly simple, like, adventure story, like, fantasy adventure story. But, like, it's not a bad story. I enjoyed it. The parts that were... In t the, o the one thing that was weird, though, is, like, the ending of that book is, like, six chapters, and each one of them are, like, less than nine pages a pop. It is just, like, boom, 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 boom. And then it's, like, and that's the end of the book. And it's, like, wait, what? That was like maybe 40 pages. What happened just now? And just like the book's over now. And it's like, but it was such a build up. Why was the ending so? Like, don't get me wrong. Like, the ending was intense and interesting and fascinating. And like had me enthralled. But it was like. There was so little of it. <laughs> Which making me sad. But also, how are you, Ignis? I hope that you're doing well. But yeah, I think that's basically the end of, like, the job. Anything that I want to talk about is going to be spoilers. 
So I feel like I'm just going to immediately put my freaking spoilers. What my why is that over there? That should be over there. Easy. Conventional opinion. I'm not a huge fan of to uh, controversial opinion. I'm not a huge fan of tokens, right? I mean, that's kind of where I'm at too, Ignis. Like when he writes action scenes and like scenes of drama, they're very interesting and I think they're pretty attention grabbing. But when that's not happening, it is slow. Like, it is very, very slow. I'm running on a ton of caffeine right now. Oh. So you're a problem child. To the timeout corner with you. <laughs> but yeah, so we're just going to talk about the book at this point. If you don't want to have it spoiled, obviously, that's totally fine. But... Summary, Bilbo gets his door kicked in by Gandalf. Yes, that Gandalf. Okay, I will go to the corner. Yeah, dang right you will. You can have, like, I don't know, a fidget spinner or something to play with in the meantime since you're so caffeinated. And it's, is it 13 dwarves? I think it's 13 dwarves. Subtitles, are you seriously quitting on me right now? How? God's this subtitle program, I swear. Or website, rather. But basically, he gets, um, like, his house gets essentially kicked in by a bunch of dwarves. And they're all just like, yeah, we're taking you along as our, our burglar. And in exchange, you get, um... You get one, how do I say it? You get your percent of the, uh, of like the loot. Like, uh, I think it's 13 of them in total. So like he gets a 13th of the loot. And so they go off an adventure and all these things happen. They like the build of up of Bilbo is interesting. Cause it starts with him basically being like, um, Oh, excuse me. He's from, like, two sides. It, for, the two sides of his family are very different. Like, the one side, who's is the, the Baggins, are, like, super, like, hobbits. Like, they like to be lazy. They like to stay at home. They have want nothing to do with adventure. They want nothing to do with drama or anything. They just like their comfort. They like their hobbit holes. They like to be left alone. But then there's the Took side. And the Took side is like a very like controversial like hobbit family that actually has like some like quote adventurer's blood in their veins. And because of that, Bilbo, like, has, like, the inkling to potentially go out on an adventure. And you're just like, all right, you know, let's see where this goes. So he ends up going out with, like, a, with the dwarves. A bunch of things happen. He his the first time that they get into an altercation. They deal with these three trolls and... Oh, what is it? Yeah, they they deal with these three trolls. And they all get captured in sacks. Like, literally, like, they fail to deal with the trolls. The trolls catch them all at night in sacks. And they're like, oh, which one do we want to cook first? And then from the shadows, they hear, some, like, a voice. But the voice sounds like the other trolls. So the trolls start fighting each other. And they fight all throughout the night. And when the morning comes... They don't realize that it's time that it is until it's too late and in this world. And congratulations, Flossie on third. When the sun hits trolls, they turn to stone. So all three of them permanently turn to stone. And the voice was, of course, Gandalf, because Gandalf makes sure that everybody is safe throughout this story. How are you, by the way, Flossie? I hope that you're doing well today. We're like just at the beginning of to of like summarize of summarizing the book, so if that's a good or a bad thing remains to be seen from your perspective. But I hope that you're doing well.
but in the treasures that the troll have found. Um, a fun fact, William, I live near the hog's back. I don't know what the hog's back is. I'm sorry, rival. And also, hello, rival. How are you? My brain is not smart and can't figure things out. I need more information. I'm exhaling after every inhale, so that's good. Well, that's very good. You have not yet been struck by the size of size. Or by the sigh of sighs. It's not going to type it properly, but the sigh, like a sickle, like a weapon. But yeah, so they go to the trolls, um, like, treasures, and they find a bunch of food. I think they find some food. No, they mostly just find money and weapons. And the weapons are actually, like, named weapons. Like, they're, like, weapons of old. I can't remember. One of them is called, like, Orc something. Like, or bleh, Orc. I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically, like, Orc's Bane. And another one is, like, the Goblin Slayer. And, like, their whole thing is that when, like, goblins are near, their blades glow, and they're just like, oh, these might be useful. So, I think one of them is, like, a dagger, but for Bilbo, it's basically a short sword, so he keeps it on his person. I don't remember who gets the other sword. I think it's Thorin, who is, like, the leader of the dwarves, and technically the rightful heir to the Lonely Mountain, which is where they're going. And so, you know, Gandalf helps them again. They go on their way. They meet the elves in Riverdale where they are given food and merriment and how to say it and new ponies and so that they're all good to go. They go on beyond. I don't remember a bunch of the book, unfortunately, because it like just kind of glazed over. But the big thing is, is that they had to go to to Mirkwood. But in order to get to Mirkwood, oh, how was it again? No, they had to go through the mountains. That's what it was. They had to go through the Misty Mountains. And on the other side, they would get to Mirkwood. Through the Misty Mountains, they end up going, uh, resting in a cave during like a powerful, powerful storm. And they get kidnapped by goblins. And though they try. Uh, Bilbo gets separated from the group. And during this separation, and thank you for the hydrate, by the way, uh, Nevek, during the, uh, the separation, he finds himself in this super dark place that he can't really find anything, but his, his hand finds a ring. And he puts the ring in his pocket. He doesn't know why he does this, but he puts the ring in his pocket. And then as he's looking, he ends up finding Gollum. He ends up meeting Gollum. And they have a, essentially like a riddle off, where like each one of them create, has to say a riddle. And the rules are that if Gollum wins, he gets to eat Bilbo. And if Gollum loses, he has to take... Bilbo across the waters to the exit. And in the process of this, Bilbo ends up winning by saying the riddle of what's in my pocket. And Gollum considers this cheating, etc. And at one point, while he's running from Gollum, because Gollum is losing his mind, you know, just like, no, he cheated, da -da 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 -da. you know, like, the only thing that we can do is to kill him. He slips, uh, Bilbo slips the ring on his finger, and he hears Gollum, like, close behind him, and then all of a sudden Gollum runs past him. And at first he's, like, really confused, like, how could he have possibly missed me? Like, it's it's basically like a straight line of a cave, what could possibly have happened? And then he realizes that the ring is making him invisible. So being a hobbit who are known for being very stealthy and quiet follows Gollum 
basically to the exit because Gollum presumes that Bilbo has just run off and he's just like, oh no, he's gonna run into the area that's so dangerous and full of, you know, like full of goblins and he's gonna get caught and ah, what could possibly happen? And so because of that, he ends up getting out. And then he, oh, how does it go again? He finds the dwarves again, takes off the ring. They're all surprised that he managed to sneak up on them and start seeing him in a really like positive light. Like, oh, he is truly like a stealthy lad. And that's when the goblins come out at night along with the, no, not the goblins, sorry. The wargs come out at night, which are like, these, like, very large, intelligent wolves. And they... How to say it? Get chased up trees, and there's a bunch of fire. I don't remember how the fire starts anymore. And then this bear shows up and, like, saves them. And they're like, what's that? And then... Uh... Gandalf explain. Oh, that's what it is. Because Gandalf throws down a bunch of, like, fiery acorns on the wolves. But then the wolves start making sure that the fire gets guided directly towards them. The wolves and the goblins. Um, he's just like, well, the bear is born. And born is, like, this powerful, like, lumberjack slash shapeshifter. Who is a very, very strange man. But if he is an ally, he is, like, an incredible ally. Like, he is, like, you know, like... He is ten, man in, ten men in and of himself. So they befriend him. He gives them a bunch of ponies to let them get to Mirkwood. Because they need to go through Mirkwood to get to the Lonely Mountain. And then they have to let the ponies go because the... Bilbo is the one who notices that, like, this bear has been following them. And Gandalf basically tells him, like, yeah, you don't think that Bourne is not going to be keeping an eye on his animals. You don't think that he's going to fully trust you. Like, this is a test. If you don't let him let his animals go once you make it to Mirkwood, like, you fail the test and you lose him as an ally and potentially gain him as an enemy. So they go into Mirkwood. Gandalf leaves them at that point. Um, and hello, Artificer. How are you? Um, oh, yeah. 15 birds and five fir trees. Oh, what shall we do with the funny things? That was the, the fire specifically. What Artificer's talking about. And how are you, Artificer? I hope that you're doing well. So they go into Mirkwood, and the whole idea is just like, you should be able to get from one side to the other, but you cannot leave the path. If you leave the path, there's no telling what will happen. So they have to do a bunch of things. Oh, and they can't drink any water in or eat anything from Mirkwood because it's all dangerous and enchanted. So at one point, one of the dwarves falls into a river. They pull him back out, and he's, like, the fattest of the dwarves, and they have to carry him for, like, three days, and the whole three days, he's fast asleep. And then when he wakes up, he's just like, I've dreamt of, like, a feast like no other. Should you, like, and just falls into, like, despair, like, we have nothing to eat. Just let me go back to sleep so I can, I can die remembering such wonderful things. And then they end up getting captured by... No, they don't get captured by elves. They get lost because the elves draw them off the path with, like, illusions of feasts. And a couple of them get knocked unconscious by it. Uh, I've got done with babysitting some 90 minutes ago and I just ate. Nice! Glad to hear that. And then there's the spider fight. The spider fight was actually really cool. Like, as someone who doesn't like spiders because of arachnophobia, like, that was a cool situation where, like, a bunch of the dwarves are strung up and Bilbo is, like, using uh, rocks to, like, knock down the webbing so that the dwarves can get themselves free. And he's, like, running around with his, with his uh, like, his goblin slayer dagger. I don't remember the exact name of it. Oh, he names it Sting. 
at that point. That's where Sting comes from, from the Lord of the Rings, because he stings all of these these spiders. Like, he kills, like, a good couple of dozen of them by himself. And they're, like, big spiders. Um, the one thing, though, that that scene always made me a little bit weirded out by is just, like, when they tell you how he learned to throw rocks, it's because when he was younger, he used to throw rocks at, like, animals. And I'm like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> It's like, yeah, he used to throw rocks at squirrels and other and other creatures in the grass. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's a little weird, Bilbo. But I guess in this moment, it's saving you and your friends' lives. So that's fine. And, um, oh, how does it go again? They survive the spiders. The dwarves get captured, and Bilbo follows them to the elven stronghold in Mirkwood. And slowly, over like several weeks, I think, at least like two weeks or something, he slowly builds a plan to get them out. And it's such a fantastic plan, because basically how it is, is there's the people of the river who are like, Far downstream from Mirkwood, who create this really, really good wine that the elves really like. So they buy the wine from the people of the river, bring it back to Mirkwood, empty the barrels, and then send the barrels back downstream towards the river. Like, they bunt, they take the, ba the empty barrels, throw them into the river until they reach, like, the big river. They bundle them up and tie them together and then bring them to the river, uh, the people of the river again. So Bilbo's like, well, we can stuff some dwarves into those empty barrels. So they do. And Bilbo's the only one who doesn't have to go in a barrel because he's basically like, well, there's not really a way for me to close the barrel by myself. So he ends up just kind of sitting on the raft of barrels being cold and miserable for like like two days or something. Because he falls into the river at one point and manages to climb back up again. But how do you climb onto, the, onto a barrel when it's loose? You don't because barrels roll. And then they get there. Uh, the dwarves, they, he drags the dwarves onto shore. He gets them all loose. A couple of them are really cranky about the situation, but they're fine. They finally are just like, well, I mean, why don't we just go to the people of the river and see if we can get some provisions there? Because we're kind of, we're, we're, we have nothing, you know, like most of us don't even have weapons. So they go, they, it turns out that the people of the river have like old stories of the dwarves that gets everybody like super like hyped up. And thank you for the stretch in the hydrate, Cobalt. Um... And, like, they stay there for a couple of days to mend and recover. And we'll stretch. And then they're giving, given, like, a bunch of provisions, some ponies, uh, some weapons. And they're just like, well, the Lonely Mountain is actually not that far from here. So, get going. And so they do. They find the secret entrance that they've been looking for. They manage to open it. And they go inside, and Bilbo finds Smog resting on his, the big dragon resting on his golden, his, his golden pile of loot. And he steals a cup, like a golden two-handed, uh, like, goblet or something, and he carefully brings it back to the dwarves to show them like look the treasure is real it's here like we can get there but dragons in this universe are like super aware of and hello Dorn um are super aware of their loot pile like he has like smog has this dream where he you know, some strange little creature came and stole from him. And when he wakes up, he notices that the cup is gone. And even though, like, the gold that he's resting on is massive. Like, it's 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 more money than, like, anybody could possibly dream of having. He notices this one cup. And he gets very angry. 
and he oh I can't remember what he does specifically but he but he ha he has an angry time and then on the the next day Bilbo tries to go back and he sees that smog is sleeping on his gold again and he's about to step forward when all of a sudden he notices an eye staring at him and he's like oh smog was pretending to be asleep and they have this back and forth and it's a very fascinating back and forth where like smog unintentionally shows bilbo like his weak spot like he has like you know like he has this insanely powerful scale over his body because he's a dragon but he has this one little patch on his chest and then and that's clearly a, uh, how to say, it's like, a, it's a notable weak point. And Dorne will actually get to that in a second. Uh, so, you know, Bilbo and him have a little bit of uh, back and forth. Uh, almost burns Bilbo, but Bilbo manages to get away. Um, in return... Through the conversation between Bilbo and Smog, Smog is like, I know what's up. I know roughly where he's coming from, and also I realize that he's connected somehow to the people of the river. So first, he goes out of his cave, and he destroys the side of the mountain that probably has this entrance, and basically blocks the dwarves inside of their own hold. And then he goes off to fight the people of the river. And one of the reasons why he d why he's, like, so pumped about it is, one, you know, like, he believes that the people of the river are responsible for trying to steal from him. But two, he's, like, excited to be able to, like, go on the hunt again. Because it's been a while since he has, he's had, like, this thrill. And this, like drive to like go and actually like hunt down people for sport so in the meantime of course the the main party is just like well we can go and explore now because it doesn't look like smog is here at the moment so they like explore the place and they find like a a watchtower to hide in for a day and they're just like Smog should be back already. Like it's it's daytime. Like what pot, what could have happened? And then we get the other story that there was a man in uh I again I don't remember the name of the place unfortunately, but like the the city of the river or the town of the river people. There was a man named Bard who was an old Dale lineage individual. And he um is displayed as like this grim and grumpy man but of somebody who's very wise so people see a bunch of like light coming from the from the lonely mountain and they're just like oh my god did the dwarves do it like you know did they you know like let the mountains run with gold to such extravagance and but and bard is like no the dragon comes get your weapons ready and a couple people are just like you're crazy dude and he's just like i'm getting my weapons ready pick you know like choose which side of history you want to be on right now and lo and behold smog comes with this intense flame and a bunch of battle happens and the archers are almost completely out of arrows and they haven't done a thing to him when all of a sudden this old raven no this old Thrash, I think is what it was called. It's like this old bird that was connected to the Dale. Like lands on his shoulder when he's down to his last arrow. And the th uh, the Thrash is like, no, like you, there is one weak point and it is upon his, it is in his left breast. Like that is where you need to shoot. And like uh, Bard uses this black arrow that is like this, I guess like this ancestral arrow that has like always been good to him and he basically speaks to it just like, you know, you've never done me wrong, black arrow. This is the time that I need you most. Like find your mark and strike true and he lets go and in one arrow he brings down Smog who crashes down into the into the city. This is a great scene, on a side note. Like, this is where Tolkien actually is, like, at his finest. Like, that scene, I was, like, plowing 
through that freaking story. Like, I am so invested, and I want to know everything that happens. It's a great scene. And, like, Dragon just, like, takes the arrow into the chest. It sinks in deep. It basically kills him instantly. He falls out of the sky, crashes down onto the floating uh, river town, and is just lays there dead. And the people who remain are, like, well, the dwarf, how to say it, like, Bard is like, we did it. We need to start rebuilding. But then, like, the, the they call him the master of, like, the the, the town of uh, the, the river town, who's just like, yeah, he's really good at money and trade, but, like, he's a coward and he's full of himself. He's just like, no, no, don't you see good people? Like, don't thank B uh, Bard for help for saving your lives. Like, instead, hate the dwarves, because the dwarves must have awoken smog and, caught and like, cast this situation upon ourselves. And also, don't forget about the riches that are in the mountain that rightfully belong to us now. You know, they owe us our due for the damage that they've done. They must make amends through coin. And also, because Smog is dead, uh, the elves of uh, Mirkwood are just like, well, wait, we really like gold and gems. We want some of that gold. So they bring a bunch of armies, too. I really, this is the one part of the book that I really liked, where I'm just like, well, wait, Smog's dead. What's the situation now? And it's like, oh, wait, Smog has been like a deterrent for this wealth. Like, no one wants to go after it because... This insanely powerful thing is protecting this gold. And now all of a sudden it's like, the threat is gone. The gold is just there. Let's go get it. And so an army, or like a small army of like the rivermen, and uh, a fairly sizable army of the merfolk, um, or sorry, of the Mer uh, the Merkwood elves like start marching towards the how, sorry start marching towards the the mountain in the meantime while they're going through the loot like the main part is going through the loot bilbo finds this gem and it's like this incredible gem that uh thorin has mentioned before i do not remember what it's called it's a something stone and it's like they say that it is such a precious gem that it on its own is worth everything in the pile. Like, it is just this incredibly valuable thing. And Bilbo ends up finding it, and just through reasons he can't understand, he pockets it. Like, he just puts it in his pocket. And he's just like, nope, I'm just not even going to tell anybody about this. Da 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 da. And the dwarves get, like, greed lust. Or, like, yeah, they get, like, greed frenzied. And they're just, like, other people will come for this gold. And they, like, spend, like, two days or three days just barricading the only entrance to, um, that is currently available into this mountain home. They just barricade the front gate. And so when the army comes in, they're just like, hey, we're here to claim. Thorin is just like, over my dead body. And there's some, like, parlays and some back and forth. Like, they're, um, they're trying to, like, find, uh, like, a fix of some kind. And Bilbo's like, this is ridiculous. Like, all of this is maddening. And also, they've sent, the dwarves have sent a raven to one of the other mountain homes and have learned that 500 like battle-hardened dwarves are now coming to aid Thor uh, Thorin in the defense of this ma of this mountain home. And Bilbo's like, oh, there's gonna be bloodshed. People are gonna die. I don't want any part of this. So he takes over a watch for one of the dwarves in the middle of the night and then he escapes. And he goes to the armies of the river folk and of the Mirkwood uh, elves. And it's just like, I need to tell you guys things. And it turns out that Gandalf happens to be there. 
and he's like, oh my god, Gandalf, you don't even know. Bah, 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 bah. And he tells them about the 500, he tells them about the situation, and then finally he's just like, I have something that could maybe tip the scales in your favor when it comes to dealing with this situation. Because for the most part, if the dwarves, like the main company dwarves, just give a portion of that wealth to the people that are kind of like not besieging them, but they're kind of besieging them. Like there'd be like, if they just gave them some money, there'd be no issues. It's like, we got what we wanted. We're leaving, you know, like we walk away as neutral parties, but they won't do that. So Bilbo gives them that stone. They're just like, this is something that Thorden is like, it is the thing he cares about. Thorin, sorry. Thorin, come on, say the thing, thank you. Um, this is what he cares about. Use this as your parley. And they try. Thorin gets mad. The dwarves are about to show up. Like, there's about to be, like, a clash between, like, the humans and the elves uh, versus the dwarves. And then, like, off in the distance, this, like, darkness shows up. And Gandalf gets in between the two opposing forces and it's just like, no, like, you guys need to calm the heck down. There's other shit that's happening right now. And it turns out that, like, the wargs and the goblins have to have come to, to take what's theirs as well. Like, they also want to get in on the Lonely Mountain treasure. So now all of a sudden it's just this freaking war against this massive cluster of of goblins and like hyper intelligent large wolves and it's like this horrible bloody fight that like you know it doesn't go very well but like they kind of get the upper hand and then the goblins start actually like getting onto the side of the mountain and start like gaining positions like that and they're like oh we'll never be able to do it and then like Born shows up and like just starts slaughtering a bunch of goblins and you're just like oh shit like there's some hope here but like the goblins are still like on the side of the mountain oh my god what are we gonna do and then you get the famous line which is the same in the Lord of the Rings the eagles the eagles are coming because the eagles saved them I forgot about the eagles at one point I apologize at one point some of them are saved by the eagles oh the eagles saved them from the fire that's what it was I'm sorry. I'm so good at remembering things. Um, and then Bilbo takes a rock to the head as he calls to people that the eagles are coming. And he's knocked unconscious. And hey, Brian, how's it going? And I think it's a day or two later, he wakes up again, like on the mend. And no, a day later, he wakes up on the mend. And, like, this random human shows up and just, like, is looking around and then, like, is about to leave. And Bilbo's like, hey, man, like, why are, you, why are you leaving me? And he's just like, who's there? Like, what is going on? And it turns out that Bilbo had put the ring on. So everyone's been looking for him, but no one can find him because he's invisible. So he takes the ring off. He goes back down. He learns about what happened. Like, mostly everybody, how to say it, like, they drove the goblins back, they did, a, like, they chased them down, they did a heckin' murder of things. Like, some of the money got split, like, Thorin. Oh, yeah, that's right, I misread it the first time. But, he, like, Bilbo gets, like, summoned to this place, and it turns out that Thorin is on his deathbed. And, like, the last thing that they get to say to each other is, like, Thorin's just, like, essentially, like, in my greed, in my greedy haze, I said some things, but know that I still see you as a friend. And Bilbo's, like, that's really appreciated. I see you as a friend, too. And then Thorin dies. And then Bilbo just, like, grabs a blanket, finds a corner, and just cries for the rest of, like, the day and night. Like, it just... Like, just as crippled by, like, his friend is, like, dying. 
he ends up getting like a bunch of gold and silver and like a powerful pony and he rides uh, back with Gandalf back to like the home of the hobbits to the Shire. Uh, and when he gets back, it turns out that like the hobbits have presumed that he's dead. So they've been auctioning off his house and his furniture. And he's just like, what the devil's happening? And everyone's just like, oh, scatter. <laughs> and uh, hold on. No, I need to read that for a second because I actually do enjoy that little scene. I thought it was funny. Uh, where's the line? There we go. So, um, if he was surprised, uh, they were more surprised still. He had arrived back in the middle of an auction. There was a large notice in black and red hung, uh, hung at the gate stating that June the 22nd, I don't know what those three names are, uh, would sell by auction the effects of the late Bilbo Beggins uh, Esquire of Bag End Under Hill Ho uh, Hobbiton, uh, sale to co uh, to commerce at ten o'clock sharp. Like he just shows up, and it's like people are just at his place having an auction for his stuff, and he's like, "Hey, so I'm alive." And hello, not the big boss. How are you? And like he loses some friends with some of the peeps. Oh snap! Thank you so much for the uh, for the te for the ten watt streak, not the big boss. Let's go! See, the watch streak is so weird. Like there, that was what? Like maybe 20, 30 seconds. I'm calling Belogna. Cobalt, you should still have your watch streak. Hold on, just scanning really quickly. Yeah, like, and then it turns out he spends, like, many years slowly trying to get his furniture back from people because he has to, like, prove that he's alive by existing. Uh, where is the line again? The uh, people had been, uh, getting especially good bargains at the sale, uh, at the sale. Took a deal of co uh, oh people that had gotten uh gotten especially good bargains at the sale, took a uh took a deal of convincing in the end to save time Bilbo had to buy back quite a lot of his furniture many of his silver spoons mysteriously disappeared and were never accounted for personally he suspected uh the Sa the Sackville Bagginses on their end they never uh admitted uh, that the returned Baggins was genuine and they were not uh not on friendly terms with Bilbo ever since uh they re they really wanted to live in his nice hobbit hole so very much and ah not the big boss thank you so much for the lichenstrepje lichenstrepje And thank you very much, my dude. That's very appreciated. And there you go, uh, Flossie. Enjoy your gift sub. But yeah, and then in the end, he basically... What the heck is the final line? I think he just lights a pipe and just is happy. I want two stickers. Ah, hold on. Let me get to the final sentence here really quickly. Oh, the the ending is basically Gandalf uh, visits. Um, visits again, and they're talking about just like, well, wait, how did I like, you know, like, how did this even get managed? And it's so crazy that all these old prophecy songs were true. And Gandalf basically responds with like, don't you think that perhaps these prophecies were meant to be fulfilled and that you were just part of helping fulfill these prophecies? 
And basically, in the end, Bilbo laughs and hands Gandalf uh, his tobacco jar. They end with smoking together. It's just like a nice little way to end it, where he's just like, oh, quite enough adventure for me, me thinks. Sits down and just, ha. Ah. To check out the to uh, Tove uh, Jackson. Hold on. Janssen's. Let me look at these. Tove Janssen's Hobbit. Oh, this! Yes, I I don't know where I got this information from. But yeah, this art was really cool. Oh, that's what it was. It was Tove Janssen. That is the reason that Gollum looks the way uh, that they do. Because the way they drew them, Tolkien was like, ah, crap. That's not exactly how I wanted him to look. So the book, The Hobbit actually got changed slightly after that drawing. And hold on, sorry, brain is 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 ing for a second. Yeah, and because of that, uh, Tolkien was just like, well, I guess I have to write uh, uh, Gollum's description a little bit differently. Anyone doing any camping? My brother would have said, why do you want to pretend to be poor? It's not about being poor. Rich people go camping too. It's got nothing to do with it. It's about the connection of nature and enjoying the, uh, how to say it, and disconnecting from like modern and like city life. At least that's how I see camping. Not that I do much camping, but that's how I always feel about it. It's the idea of just like, all right, we disconnect from this like busyness and just kind of go to where things are more quiet and maybe not necessarily peaceful, but still. And no problem at all, Juju. You, you, ju Juju, you have yourself a good rest of your night. Thank you so much for stopping by. Blue, first of all, congratulations, and second of all, you're just flexing on, on poor, poor Cobalt right now. But also, yeah, I'm not sure what, what to really say about the book other than that. Like, there's not a whole lot to say besides, like, that there's a lot of slow moments, but the action moments are really good. That's kind of where I'm kind of sitting at the moment. You know? Like, was a fine enough book? Again, probably like a 3 to 3.5. Like, it was fun. Like, the, the sections that were exciting were very exciting. They were well written. They were fun. But there were just a lot of really slow parts that were just like, Why is it so slow? Why are you deciding to do this? It reminds me when I was reading Return of the King. I'm still... I don't know if I finished Return of the King. I don't know. Because I remember... The... My, like, I remember reading post Helm's Deep. And being like, heck this book. I don't want to read about this forest anymore. And then... All of a sudden... You have that, but I remember reading the Battle of Minas Tirith, which is after Helm's Deep, and I'm like, So, did I read this? I don't know. Ah, I don't know. And we do need to find one. Uh, Flossie, I don't know which book yet, but the next one. We're going to read is by um, Terry Pratchett. We're going to read one of the Terry Pratchett, probably Discworld, one of the Discworld books. 
because it's been recommended to me by a couple of people, and I'm like, you know what? Heck it. Let's go to Discworld and see what kind of what kind of shenanigans are over there. So I hope that 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 goes well. Fingers crossed. But yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. Ah, I'm very dead-brained right now. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, this is one of those ones where it's just like, this book doesn't have a lot of, like... It's just a really straightforward book is the summary. I just know that it was, like, a fun read. It had a lot of slow moments, which is why I'm not giving it a four. And probably will stick to three, actually. I'll stick to three. It was above average, but it was kind of slow. for Especially for, like, today's era. And yeah, like, we don't have any reviews to read, so... I think that's basically the end of stream, sillily, lilililililily enough. It's just a small little Friday stream... Just remembering that books are neato and let us dive into worlds that are not our own. Me just being a simple boy, doing simple boy things. Besides, my brain is a freaking scrambled mess. I'm probably going to take the rest of the day to just... Bleh. I missed the next book mention a dial I heard was fingers crossed. Oh, uh, I don't know which book yet, Flossie, but uh, something by Terry Pratchett. One of the Discworld books. Frozen Scarecrow recommended Guards, Guards, but like, I'd rather start on the first one if I could, but I'm not sure yet. I'll figure that out by the end of the day. And heck yeah, Artificer. Uh, you're not the only one who has told me that Death is their favorite character. So, I think, yeah, Discworld, one of the Discworld books is going to be our next book. I'll figure out which one. Guards, Guards is a pretty good starting point. Dang it! You're the third person to tell me that, Artificer. I'm starting to think that maybe Guards, Guards is the one we should read. From the from the library. I'll have to check and see. I think this time is going to be the time that I'm actually going to see if that library near my place has it. And if they don't, then it's going to be an adventure because we'll see. There's a chart I recently saw for the reading order. Oh, go on. Yeah. I'll go to the library probably to uh, I'll have to check their dead their their hours and see when I can go visit and be like, "Hi, do you have Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett?" Let's see if I can find an incentive to you. Please do post it in the post it in the book club somewhere. It would be very appreciated. But all right. Yeah, I think we're just going to wrap up today just a simple little 1 hour stream just talking about books. My brain's a scrambled mess. I'm going to be streaming five days this week again, which I think might be too much. We'll figure it out regardless. Tomorrow we're going to do an art stream. We're going to start drawing those silly little bird boys that, peop that I owe people. So instead, we're going to go... Hmm. Oh no, we have like a bunch of places where we can go. We could go to Haya. I don't get to raid Orange at all. I think... Oh, did Orange just get offline? Orange, did you just quit streaming? You bleep. Well, no Orange. Off to Haya we go. Oh, no way. No, 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 no. We'll go to Olive. Because Olive is is chilling right now five books down you're reading up a storm we'll make it to 12 books by the end of the year gosh dang it and one of them is gonna be dune i'd like to see you stop me flossy
Yeah, I can't believe Orange would do this to me. I am offended and upset and also crying. All right. In that case, we are going to head over to Psych Olive, who is currently playing Minecraft. I'm actually going to remember to do it this time, but I did it in the wrong order. Oh, well, please, I have to, Flossie, for my own good. But yeah, thank you everybody for hanging out today. I'm sorry that it is a really short stream. I was like kind of contemplating on not streaming today because I'm so just like brain dead. -ed 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 -ed. But no, we have book club. We have obligations. Sometimes we got to suck it up and just deal with the situation. So if you guys are subscribed, please use the bottom raid message. If you're not subscribed, please use the top made raid message because I did them in the wrong order. Don't worry about it. Do a quick outro and then we're going to head over to Psych Olive who's currently playing Minecraft. So thank you guys so much for sticking around. Whether you were chatting, whether you were lurking, whether you just popped in and out for a second, know that you were super appreciated. I hope that you're having a great day, afternoon, evening, or night, whatever time it happened to be for you. Hope that you guys are taking care of yourselves. I hope that you're drinking plenty of water and... When you finally do sleep, whatever time that happened to be for you, hope that you have a very restful sleep. I will see you guys over at Olive's, and I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow. And if I don't, that's totally fine. I hope that you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you guys the next time I see you. Bye-bye.